Welcome to Glastonbury Abbey, a place steeped in history, legend and folktale. However, one story for me stands out among the rest. So, if you come for a walk with me, I'll tell you the story of the rise and brutal fall of Richard Whiting, the last abbot of Glastonbury. Richard Whiting was born in Rington in North Somerset in 1461. A well-educated man, he would attend school at Glastonbury Abbey itself before going on to complete an MA and a doctor's degree at Cambridge. Career-wise, Whiting would return to Glastonbury Abbey and work his way up the ranks, first becoming ordained as a deacon and a priest, then as a chamberlain before being selected by his peers and the Cardinal Thomas Wolsey to succeed the outgoing abbot Richard Beer, who passed away in 1525. Life under Richard Whiting, well, it couldn't have been better. The Abbey was prosperous, the community outside of its walls was thriving, and Whiting himself, well, he was held in very high regard as being a noble, spiritual, caring and sober leader. But the beginning of his end came some 10 to 15 years later, when King Henry VIII started his famous dissolution of the monasteries. The reason for the dissolution is quite simple. King Henry threw a massive hissy fit with the Pope over his first divorce, which effectively ended with him separating from Rome and being made head of the Church of England. Henry would then appoint Thomas Cromwell to be his chief minister and to oversee the reform. Keen to see off any reminder of the wealth and power of the Catholic Church, any monastery that didn't make enough money or stepped out of line in any way was gone. And to be fair, that was most of them. And because of this, back home in Glastonbury, Richard Whiting became ever more concerned, as he would be, for the future of his beloved Abbey, and so supported the King, even though he knew that Glastonbury was one of the most, if not the most successful Abbey in the country. Well, like all the other holy houses, Glastonbury was investigated by order of Thomas Cromwell. But they couldn't find anything wrong, not a single issue. So they left them alone. Until a few years later, 1539 comes around, and by this point, Glastonbury is the last remaining monastery in England. Thomas Cromwell's cronies turned up again, this time unannounced. They ransacked the abbey, found incriminating documents and hidden treasures, which was enough for them to seize the abbey and shut it down. Despite being old and frail at this point, Richard Whiting refused to surrender the Abbey, but in doing so was arrested and taken to the Tower of London for further investigation by Thomas Cromwell. The crime for which he was charged is still unclear to this day, but it's thought to have been treason. After being taken back to Somerset for a mock trial in Wells, Whiting and two of his closest monks, John Thorne and Roger James, would receive their gruesome punishment. All three men, on Saturday the 15th of November, were to be strapped to wooden hurdles and dragged by horse through the centre of Glastonbury Town, before being taken to the top of Glastonbury Tor. And this is where all three men were hanged, drawn and quartered. Richard Whiting's head would be fastened to the west gate of the now deserted Glastonbury Abbey and his other limbs were displayed in Wells, Ilchester, Bath and Bridgewater, effectively as a warning not to mess with the crown. Well, Richard Whiting's name is far from forgotten because centuries later after his death, he would be beatified by Pope Leo XIII. Effectively, his name and memory would be blessed and as little as a few years back in 2021, a local campaign group here in Glastonbury petitioned the monarchy to try and have him posthumously pardoned. What a man he must have been for that to have happened almost 500 years after his passing. See you next time.